Welcome back to Advanced Photo Manipulation Movie Poster Effects. My name is Kirk Nelson, and we now are on lesson number six. In this lesson, we will be discussing how to create the armor shells that goes around the mechanical pieces of the robot that we created last lesson. Okay, so here's where we last left our giant fighting robot. And in this lesson, we're going to discuss how to build that armored shell casing that would go around the mechanical portions of this lower leg here. So first of all, I'm going to isolate that just so it's easier to see. So I'm going to turn off that background and the other elements just so that we can focus directly on what we're doing here. Now, if you remember from last lesson, when we constructed the mechanical elements here, we clipped them to this lower right leg, which was just a cutout of that figure that we photographed at the beginning of the course. I'm going to take that same piece and create a new copy of it and drag that copy up over the top of the rest of those mechanical portions of the leg. Now move it over. Now I've got the knee attached to it here. I don't need that. So I'm just going to select that area and clip it off. All right, and then position it over here. And once again, I'm going to transform this to be significantly larger than the piece that it's sitting on top of. Sometimes it's easier to hide the other pieces around it first and reduce the opacity a little so we can see it a little better. Because this is an armored shell, it is going to have some significant heft to it that sits around the rest of the leg and sort of encases it. So we have this leg casing here. And the thought is we need to carve out areas of it that you can see through the casing to the robotic form underneath. And the best way to do that is to use a path generated with the pen tool. And now one of the things I really like to do is to start by creating a flat shape and then taking those paths and transforming them onto the leg. Because you can go into edit, free transform path and have the same transformation tools that you have when you're transforming a regular object. This way you can get the perspective to match up a little bit better. And once those paths are on there, you can go to layer, vector mask, current path. And now if it's creating a inverse of that, you essentially just have to pick those individual paths and make sure the mode is on subtract front shape. Because if it's on the other way, it's going to do the backwards mask of what you want. So just be creative with the way you add the shapes to this. You want some areas that you can see through it, but it shouldn't look like it's a useless piece of shell. It should almost look like you're adding vent work or access ports, and it should appear to have some sort of reason why there's openings where it is. Maybe it allows the movement of a joint or it allows access to some of the controls, but you don't want to do it necessarily randomly. You want to put a little bit of thought into it, make it look like there's some purpose behind it. Okay, so I've got my inset carved into this outer shell. Now I want to add some texture to the shell to make it look like it's maybe a bolted in piece of armor. And for that, I'm going to use this photo here. This is number 351. It's this tail end of what appears to be a, a jet engine or something, but I love the way that we have these bolted in plates of metal going around this port here. So I've created my path with my pen tool around this, and I will create my selection on that, and then copy that, and paste that in over here. And of course it comes in way too large, that's to be expected, because we have to transform it and scale it down and make it work with this leg plate that we're working with here. And once we have the positioning about how we like it, put that opacity back up, clip it to that layer, and then also change it to luminosity. Now I'm noticing that when I positioned this in, I got the curve going in the wrong direction because looking at this, it looks like 
the curve of this metal should appear to be arching downwards. That's the way I've carved in these other little ports here. But my seams of my metal are going upwards. So I'm going to turn that around. There we go. I like the way that sets in there now. And so that we can get the same lighting as we had in the original model, we're going to do that same trick of copying this layer up, clipping it to again, and setting that to overlay. So you see how that sort of forces that lighting from that outside shell onto that texture. Okay, so next we need to add some thickness to this armor shell. Right now it's just sort of floating over the top of that. It needs to appear to have some depth to the metal areas. So I'm going to take these three layers, these are the three layers we created for this shell, and create a merged layer from them. That's holding down the Alt key and going to Layer, Merge Layers. Creates a new layer at the top that is all of them merged together. So I don't want to reposition it yet. I want to move it below the original layer there. And then I'm going to nudge it around, in this case, over to the left and up a little bit. Now, just so I'm clear on what I'm doing over here in my layers, this is going to be the lower leg thickness layer. And you can see how it's offset from there. But we've got this lip over here that really doesn't make sense for what we're trying to do with this. So that needs to be completely removed. That can be entirely erased from this layer. So the only portions of this layer we see is the ones that's in perspective view from these cut-ins and up around the top lip there. Now, right now it's clear it's just a copy of the visual parts of the layer. It needs to look a little bit different. Here's the trick that I really like to use to make that work. First, I like to lock the transparency of the pixels. So by clicking this lock checkerboard little icon here, and we see the lock icon appear on that layer. And then I go to filter, blur, motion blur. And I change the angle of that motion blur to match approximately the direction that I moved it in order to get that apparent visual thickness to it. And you can see how that's starting to kind of distort those pixels so that it's not the direct copy like that. And it's giving some thickness to the lighting of that layer. Okay, so then with the layer still locked, you have to go in and sort of paint in some of those shadow areas and change the visual tones of this just so it becomes a little more apparent. So if we grab our brush tool, set it to black, put the opacity down to about 30% and just very slightly add in a little bit of purposeful lighting to this layer. And you can switch back and forth between adding in shadow areas and adding in some highlights on the lips of it. Okay, now the other part of this thickness layer that needs to be dealt with is the edges that don't tend to make sense. Because if you look up here at this top right, this metal piece would be wrapping around this leg. So we wouldn't see this little bump here. We would see it sort of going back and along and creating a curve along here. So let's unlock our layer pixels and start dealing with that. That really just has to be dealt with in a very illustrative manner. So let's pick a elliptical selection tool and just approximate about that curve that we think that we're going to need. Use our brush tool again, set back up to 100% opacity, and then just start painting in that area. Now, if just grabbing the paint colors isn't working too well for you, use some of the other retouching tools that we have, like the clone stamp tool. And so you get an effect that appears to be that this piece of metal is wrapping in around the back of that leg. And you'll need to do that on all the edges that don't make visual sense. Now here's another portion here that's looking a little strange because this is the thickness of this shell, we get this weird triangle because of the way we offset that layer. So that's gotta be filled in. And 
All right, guys, we're almost done here. This is looking really, really good. But the last step is to add in some other lighting effects due to the shadowing that we would see from this armor being around this other mechanical part. So back to the leg copy here, create another new layer clipped to it. This is just going to be the armor shadow. And that's simply taking the black brush at a low opacity and painting in the darker areas where that, where that armor shell is casting a shadow onto the parts underneath. All right, guys, nice work. That's looking very, very good. Okay, that brings us to an end of lesson number six. We've created the armor shell. And in the next lesson, lesson seven, we'll talk about how to use these same two techniques of creating the mechanical parts and then putting an armor shell around them to fill in the entire rest of the robot figure.